Gentlemen, this is the dreaded bone chop. This thing's a beast. All I ever wanted to hear. The Yadagon. The Yadagon was prominently used by elite infantry soldiers in Ottoman Turkey from the 16th to 19th centuries. Revered for its extreme lightweight and lethal forward curve, it was a quick and deadly slicer, while its strong tapered tip made it a powerful thruster. It also featured a unique yet practical pommel that contained flared out ears to prevent it from slipping from the hand in battle. A fierce and respected weapon, the Yadagan was most notably wielded by Suleiman the Magnificent, the longest reigning sultan of the Ottoman Empire. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take your Yadagan and deliver slashes and thrusts on this ballistics dummy. Dave, you're first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I'm so nervous right now, and I'm just hoping my blade will perform well. That bow's dropping out everywhere. Let's talk about your weapon, Dave. It follows the feel of a Yadagon that's supposed to be light and deadly. The edge you have here is sharp, where it's curved in to lacerate. Your Yadagon will kill. Thank you very much. All right, Gabe, your turn. You ready? Go nuts, man. All right, Gabe, it is so light, it really feels like it's not there. It's almost scary. When I thrust, it penetrates easily and slashes down. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. To test the strength of your weapon, I'll be chopping into these bones six times. Dave, you're up first. Hacking bone is a very difficult thing to do with a thin edge. I'm aghast knowing what's going to be coming. All right, David, that's a tough test. Those are very thick bones, but what we've got going on here is a lot of chipping and distortion on your blade. We've also got a major crack in your handle that runs right up through the pins. All right, Gabe, your turn. You ready for this? Go nuts. OK, Gabe, the convex edge you've got on here is pretty much the perfect edge for a test like this. Sharp and strong. I can feel just the smallest amount of a roll. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, next up, the sharpness test. For that, I'll give it to Doug. Bladesmiths, to see if your blade is still sharp, I will take your weapon and slash through these silks. If your blade is still sharp, it should cut cleanly. If not, it may rip or tear, or worse, do nothing. Dave, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right. I love the balance of your blade. I like the way it curves in, but you can really feel the edges now. It's serrated. <laughs> It hangs up with silk. But then on the last piece, just when it's nice and taut, you can lacerate and cut through it. Overall, your blade will still cut. Thank you. All right, Gabe, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Gabe, your blade is so light, you're barely like cutting through air. I glided through this, lacerated, and of course, in the finishing cuts here, cut easily through that silk. It cuts. 
Good job. Thank you very much. Bladesmiths, you both created remarkable finale weapons, but in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fired champion. And that champion is... Gabe, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Dave, please surrender your weapon. It's exactly what I expected. It was very difficult testing, but I'm still the guy with the cracked edge and the broken handle. Gabe, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. I've never seen anybody less stoked about getting <laughs> 10 grand in my entire life. Won't you please present that weapon to the judges? Feels great to be the Forged and Fire champion, but I'll do my celebrating behind closed doors. I felt like I was the underdog, but underdogs win sometimes, I guess. <laughs> the Indian two-handed sword. Emerging around the 17th century, this rare two-handed sword joins some of the most iconic bladed weapons produced in the Indian subcontinent. The long double-edged blade reached lengths of up to five feet and was so heavy, it required the wielder to use two hands for more accurate strikes. It also featured three brass globes positioned on the shaft that offered a more secure grip, as well as a counterbalance for the heavy blade. Despite its substantial size, the blade was designed to flex. By the mid-18th century, improved gunpowder technology spread throughout India, making the Indian two-handed sword obsolete. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver killing blows on this boar carcass. Jonathan, you're up first. You ready? Go for it. All right, Jonathan, let's talk about your sword right here. First up, it's sharp. Definitely lacerated through easily. When wielding this weapon, there's a nice balance to it. Overall, your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Ed, are you ready? I am. All right, Ed, let's talk about your weapon right here. First up, I like the leather wrapping that you did right here on the handle. It gives it a good grip. Your blade is a little bit on the heavier side, but upon the swing, it lacerates deeply into the carcass. It will kill. Gentlemen, this is the dreaded bone chop. Remember, this test is all about what the bones do to your blades and not what your blades do to the bones. Ed, you're up first, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Well, Ed, it's all in one piece, but there is some chipping on the blade here. Oh, shoot. The sword itself is heavy. The handle's a bit big for my hand. All that being said, it held up relatively well. Well done. Thank you. Jonathan, you're up. You ready? Hope so. Well, Jonathan, it's a similar result. There is some edge chipping here as well. The handle being round on one of the hits did, did roll in my hand. Aside from edge chipping, held up very well. Well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting through these pumpkins. We'll take a look at those cuts, see how clean they are. Jonathan, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Jonathan, you can see your blade has such a flexibility to it that when it hit, the blade actually warped out, cut over and through. It's a heck of a cutter. 
Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Ed, you're up. Are you ready? All right, Ed, that's a good, clean cut on that pumpkin. You kind of see what happened. I started compensating for the weight and pulled up and through. The weight factor in me using it is an issue, but definitely sharp, definitely a good cutter. Well done. It's really hard to say one way or the other right now who could and couldn't win this thing. Jonathan and Ed, the judges have finished their deliberation, and there can only be one Forest and Fire champion, and that champion is... Jonathan, congratulations. You are a new Forest and Fire champion. Ed, your sword didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. I agree with the judge's decision. His blade was more usable. I made a good blade. He made a little bit better blade. No matter what, I'm still a happy cat. Jonathan, good job. You are a new Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for how much money? $10,000. $10,000, that's right. Thank you. Jonathan, please present your blade to the judges. I won Forge of Fire. That's pretty awesome. It's not really sunk in yet that I won. I'd love to have one of those grinders, so <laughs> I might buy some shop tools, too. We just, we'll see. Jay Nielsen's War Scythe. This War Scythe was personally created by our very own Beast from the East. This War Scythe is a menacing variation on a centuries-old peasant's weapon from Middle Age Europe. Ready for battle at a moment's notice, farmers would take their scythes from work to war during uprisings, riots, or calls to battle. This weapon uses a long shaft to generate massive power to cut down enemies, while its lethal sharp point could be thrust into infantry and cavalry. This multifaceted scythe features a fork opposite the blade as a brutal piercing element and a small blade at the bottom of the pole to finish off an opponent. Scythes are represented in pop culture as sinister and ominous weapons symbolizing death and is most notoriously wielded by the Grim Reaper. Up first, our very own dealer of death, the doer of deadly deeds, the kill test master, Doug Markaida. <laughs> yeah, he just looks like a murderer. I am really nervous. All right, Alex, the balance is light, allowing it to be a very fast weapon that you can use. It'll hand long-handed or for close quarters. Your weapon will kill. All right, Trevor, trick or treat. Treat? <laughs> Indeed. All right, Trevor, the tip alone penetrates deeply into the gut, and the edges here are sharp enough to, well, make it lose its head. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Smiths, welcome to the strength test, the dreaded coffin challenge. I'm gonna take the bones and beat them repeatedly into the blade of your scythe. And Alex, you're locked in and ready to go first. You ready? Yep. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> 
Alex, you survived. Good job. The only issue I have, you have some slight rolling on the edge, and the head of this moves, so it's not secure anymore. But your edge held up great. Good job. Thank you. How you feeling, Trevor? Uh, pretty good right now. Good? We'll see how you feel in a minute. Nice job, Trevor. Held up well. Your edge is still good. Nice and sharp. Everything's still tight. Good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths. This is the sharpest test the zombies. Surprise! To test the edge of your weapon, I'm going to take your scythe and cut through this rope, thereby releasing a surprise. All right. Alex, you're up first. Ready? Certainly. All right, Alex, it cut easily on the rope. When you're puncturing this, it cuts through and slices. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Trevor, your turn. So you ready? Hell yeah. All right, Trevor, the edge that you have here lends itself to cut the rope much easier. When you're puncturing, it starts to cut all the way through. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, you guys have done fantastic work, but only one of you can be the Force of Fire champion, and that champion is... Trevor, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Alex, unfortunately, your blade took some damage in our strength test. You did great work, my friend. But at this time, I have to ask you to please exit the forge. Ultimately, it came down to the construction. I think I definitely made a blade that can intimidate anyone. Well, Trevor, the judges all agree you made a damn near perfect war scythe, which has earned you the title of Forge and Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Come on forward and shake our hands. I won! Woo! I think the biggest thing I learned was to keep on trying. If something doesn't go your way, don't get upset about it. Just keep moving forward. This was a perfect Halloween experience. I feel like I just went trick-or-treating and I got a pillowcase full of candy. Blackbeard's infamous cutlass. Among the most notorious pirates of the 18th century, Blackbeard terrorized Caribbean and Atlantic merchant shipping with his trademark cutlass in hand. Its short but thick curved blade featured a razor-sharp edge that was ideal for hacking and slashing during close quarters combat while seizing small vessels. In his legendary battle with Captain Robert Maynard in 1718, Blackbeard's cutlass broke Maynard's sword in half with a single blow. Today, Blackbeard's menacing presence and expert swordsmanship can still be seen in the video game Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. Bladesmiths, to test the lethality of your cutlass, I'm going to inflict lethal wounds on these ballistic dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? I sure hope so, Doug. Let's do this.
All right, Jason, you got a very big handle here. But at least it's got the swells, it's got an indexing to where I hold on to it, I can tell where the edge is. The weight that you have in this weapon is so light in sense that I can wield it even around here. You've got the clavicle into the ribs, all the way through the lungs, and definitely it will kill. All I ever wanted to hear. Made my day. Seth, you're up next. You ready? Get some. Right, Seth, your sword is forward heavy without a balance coming back. I don't know whose shoulder's gonna hurt more. The dummies are mine, but your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Test the strength and durability of your swords. I'll be chopping through these bones and then attacking that peg leg. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your blades. Jason, you're up. Are you ready? The balance of your weapon is really nice, which is surprising because you've made a two-handed cutlass. Your blade held up very well, except for the one little chip, and it's not even a chip, it's a roll. So it didn't blow out. It's a good job. Thank you, Dave. All right, Seth, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Seth, first up, this thing's a beast. It is probably a pound heavier than your competitor's sword. Your blade, I mean, I can run my finger nail down this. I can see a couple of glinting spots, but it really didn't take any damage. All right, bladesmiths, let's find out if there's any edge left. This is the rope cut and pirate sail slash. To test the edge of your cutlass, I will cut this rope, which will raise the sail, and then I will slash the sail. This is all about what your sword will do to the sail and rope. Jason, you up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Jason, your edge cut through the rope easily and cuts with every part that the edge met on this pirate sail. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Awesome. Seth, how are you feeling? Feeling good, let's go. Let's do this. All right, Seth, what are the chances you find a very dull spot on the first cut on the rope? But on the second cut, it found another spot that was sharp. But on the sail, working a heavy sword like this affects my cuts. Jason, Seth, the judges have tested your weapons and they've made a final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Jason. Congratulations, you're the new Forge and Fire champion. Seth, unfortunately, 
your blade did not make the cut, please surrender your blade. Jason, congratulations. You are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a bundle of bullion that's worth 10 grand. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Come on. That, that's incredible. Forge and Fire champion. The Executioner's Sword. The Executioner's Sword performed its bloody work in 16th century Central Europe. Unlike combat swords, this lethal blade features a straight, double-edged cutting blade with a blunt tip, perfect for swiftly chopping off the heads of criminals. This deadly weapon was used on many aristocratic felons rather than the ax, since it allowed the victim to meet his end in a dignified kneeling position rather than laying it face down with his head on the block. While the executioner's sword fell out of use in the early 18th century, this gruesome sword is still wielded in the 2019 video game Mordhau. Basewitz, welcome to the keel test. The Executioner's Sword. That word alone just gives you visions of decapitated heads. <laughs> so to find out what kind of lethal damage your Executioner's Sword can do, I'll deliver some well, lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Nathan, is it time? It's time, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little off the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nathan. First up, this is a heavy beast. It is so forward heavy that you need two hands to control that. Now, your handle construction is smooth. I'll give you that. But it also feels a little bit rounded over here where it actually gives me much more control sideways than it does this way. But overall, your weapon, sir. It will kill. Awesome. All right, Gunner, your turn. So you ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Gunner, let's talk about your executioner's sword over here. Your blade right here has a finer grind, so it makes it a little bit lighter. And the edge that you have here, when it came to that skull, just glided into that. Overall, sir, your executioner's sword, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the skull and bone chop. Now, to test the overall construction of your blades, as well as how they feel while they're being used, I'll be chopping into these skulls and that nasty giraffe bone. Nathan, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. <laughs> Holy giraffe. <laughs> All right, Nathan, so right off, man, this thing is heavy. Once you get it moving, it's going, but controlling it's tough. Having said that, your edge held it beautifully. It's still just as sharp as when I started, which is pretty darn sharp. So good job on that. Thanks. I like sharp things. Gunner, ready? What if I said no? <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> you don't exactly. watch this show much, do you? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so gonna right off, lighter blade, easier to control. A lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got more handle here. Now your blade, it's got some compacting on the edges, but I wouldn't run my finger down this edge. It's still plenty sharp. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. All right, bladesmiths. This is the sharpest test, the jackfruit and water jug slice. Nathan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. All right, let's do this. Do. 
real sharp. Yeah. All right, Nathan. As far as the downward chop, it's a very clean cut. Easy, no resistance whatsoever. Now, when I was cutting, as soon as I met the resistance of the water, it kind of rolled on my hand. But anything that it did have contact with, it was able to cut. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gunner, your turn, so you ready? Yes, sir, I am. Let's do this. All right, Gunner, the handle construction you have here is wide and ovoid enough to where when I hold onto it, I can really tell where the edge is, and it's much easier to control a blade like this. In the slice, you can see that cuts nicely. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. Well, Bladesmiths, only one of you can leave here with the title of Fortune Fire Champion and get that check for $10,000. Now, the judges discussed your blades, and they made a final decision. Today's Force and Fire champion is... Gunner, congratulations. Now, Nathan, you fought hard, man, but unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, bud. Well, I'm gonna have to find a different way to take my wife to go see Bigfoot, but we're still gonna go. <laughs> well, Gunner, that makes you the Force and Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I just won Forged and Fire. Feeling good? Well, I, I mean, I, I never thought I would make it this far from day one. I don't necessarily think that I'm a better smith than any of these other guys. It just worked out in my favor today. Uh, as far as the money, uh, after football season ends, my wife and I will probably take a long weekend somewhere. 